Hi there and welcome to another video for the Edexcel Further Pure 1 Maths A Level Syllabus. In this video we're working through matrices and transformation past paper questions. As always, take a look at the question, pause the video, try it and then mark your work against mine. Here's the first question. Okay, we're given a matrix R. We are told that A and B are constants, and in particular, A is a positive number. It simply asks us to find out R squared for part one. So R squared is R multiplied by R. So you take uh, the matrix A2, A, and B, and you multiply it by the same matrix A2, A, and B. And you multiply that out using matrix multiplication methods. So a times a is a squared and 2 times a is 2a. So the first entry is a squared plus 2a. Next, a times 2 plus 2 times b. That's 2a plus 2b. Next, a times a plus uh, b times a. So that's a squared plus ab. And lastly, a times 2 is 2a and b times b is b squared. So 2a plus b squared. And there we're done r squared is given to us in terms of a and b. Okay, part b. Part b says that r squared represents an enlargement with center 0, 0 and scale factor 15. Now you should know that whenever you see a matrix of the form, let's say, um, k, 0, 0, k, and that matrix represents a transformation, that transformation is an enlargement. It always has center 0, 0. And the scale factor of enlargement is that number k. So, for example, if you had a matrix 2, 0, 0, 2, that's an enlargement by, by scale factor 2 around the center. So, what is a matrix that represents an enlargement by scale factor 15? Well, clearly, it's 15, 0, 0, 15. Now, from part A, we know that R squared uh, represents this enlargement, and we also know uh, an expression for R squared. R squared, in part A, we worked out in terms of A and B. So what we can do is we can equate what we did in part A and let it equal the 15, 0, 0, 15 from part B. Then we can equate like terms. That 15 must equal um, this. Um, that 0 must equal this, etc. That 0 must be that, and that 15 must be that. We would get four simultaneous equations, and we'd be able to solve them for A and B appropriately. So, the first one, let's equate the 15 to A squared plus 2A. So we would have 15 is equal to A squared plus 2A. That's a quadratic in terms of A. You can solve that. Uh, you make one side is equal to 0. So you subtract 15 off both sides, and you would get that um, a squared plus 2a subtract 15 is equal to 0. You can factorize that as a uh, plus 5a subtract 3, and that tells you that on the one hand, a is either negative 5, or on the other hand, a is equal to positive 3. Now, could it be both, or which one is it? Well, if you remember back at the, the start of the question, it told you a was bigger than 0. So we're going to ignore the negative 5 answer, and we're just going to take the a is 3 answer. OK, uh, let's do the next one. We would have 0 is equal to 2a plus 2b. OK, therefore, subtracting 2b off both sides and dividing by 2, uh, negative b must be a, so in particular, if a is 3, we're saying, then b must be equal to negative 3. Okay? So those first two are solved. Does it work here? Would uh, a and b chosen as we found them uh, be 0 here? a squared is 9. a times b would be 3 times negative 3 is minus 9. That would be 0. It works. Does it work here? 2 times a is 6. And negative 3 squared is 9. Uh, 6 plus 9 is 15. We have definitely found the right answers, and so we have completed the question. Okay, next question. Right, part A. 
Write down a 2 by 2 matrix that represents an enlargement with, scale, uh, with center 0 and scale factor 8. You should know this by now, and it would simply be 0, uh, 8, 0, 0, 8. Simple as that. Nice, easy one mark question. Part B, a matrix that represents a reflection in the x-axis. Well, you could remember this, but I wouldn't bother. There's more important things to have in your brain. What I would do is I would draw out uh, your 1, 0 vector and your 0, 1 vector. And I would work out where they go after a reflection in the x-axis. And that will tell us what the uh, columns of the matrices are. So where does 1, 0 go after you reflect it in the x-axis? Well, it stays where it is. Where does 0, 1 go after you reflect it in the x-axis? Well, it goes down here, and that point there is 0, negative 1. So what's happened uh, to 1, 0? It stayed there, so the first column of the matrix is 1, 0. What's happened to 0, 1? Well, it's gone down here, so the second column of the matrix is 0, negative 1. And we've got ourselves our one mark there. Part C. Hence or otherwise, find a matrix T that represents an enlargement with center 0, 0, scale factor 8, followed by, very important, afterwards then, you do a reflection in the x-axis. So, the first thing you do to uh, your point or your shape is an enlargement with scale factor 8. So we write that down. Having done that, you then do a reflection in the x-axis, which we've previously worked out the matrix for. Now, it's very important you remember the order uh, this way around. In general, if you are doing two transformations after each other, like A, B, they would be A times B in matrix form. That means B first, then A. So it goes the opposite way to what you think. So if I'm doing the enlargement first, that goes on the right, and afterwards, the reflection goes on the left. Now, to work out what happens when you do this, multiply the two matrices together and see what happens. So, 1 times A and 0 times 0 would give me 8. 1 times 0, 0 times 8 is 0. 0 times 8 and negative 1 times 0 is 0. And 0 times 0 is 0. Subtract 1 times 8 is negative 8. And that matrix there is the matrix T they have asked you for. Okay, it then says find AB. Now, uh, AB, I'll just copy this onto the next slide here. So we have AB. A and B are as follows, and it asks you simply to multiply A times B. So that's a nice, easy uh, question for you there for three marks. So, 6, 1, 4, 2, multiplied by k1, c, negative 6. It says that k and c are constants. It doesn't say whether they're positive or negative. They're just numbers. Let's multiply this out. 6 times k plus 1 times c is 6k plus c. 6 times 1, add 1 times negative 6. So that would simply be 0. 4 times k uh, plus 2 times c. That's 4k plus 2c. And 4 times 1, uh, add 2 times negative 6, well, that would be 4, subtract 12, which is negative 8. And it's as simple as that. That is uh, some of the easiest three marks you will get in an FP1 paper. Part E. Now, maybe this is where it gets slightly trickier. Given that AB represents the same transformation as T, find the values of K and C. Now, let's write down what AB was. AB was this here. So, AB was equal to 6k plus c, um, 0, 4k plus c, negative 8. So this here is AB. And we know it's the same as the, uh, the transformation T, which we did in a previous part, and we said the transformation T was 8, 0, 0, negative 8. So we can make, the only way the transformations can be equal is if their matrices are equal. So 8, 0, 0, negative 8. So we can say that this entry must be the same as this entry. This entry must be the same as this. It is. They're both 0. That's good. That's the same as that. They're both negative 8. Good. 
and this one must be the same as this one. So we've got ourselves two simultaneous equations we can solve to find k and c. So let's write them down. 6k plus c is equal to 8, and 4k plus 2c is equal to 0. Equations 1 and 2, simple case of simultaneous equations to solve there. How would I do this? Well, I'd actually just tap this in the calculator and work it out. Um, but if you wanted to work out longhand, I'd multiply that matrix by 2, let's say, and get 12k plus 2c is equal to 16. Um, I would keep this, this one as it is, so 4k plus 2c is equal to 0, and I would call that equation 3 and 4, and I would simply subtract them. Do 3 subtract 4, that will give me 8k's is equal to 16, therefore dividing by 8k is equal to 2, and substituting that back into one of these equations up here, that will get me that c is equal to negative 4. Very simple two marks, in fact. Okay, next question. Okay, first part. Describe fully the transformation represented by the matrix M. So it's quite a tricky question here. I would draw yourself out a picture. I would draw out your... Um, you could call it the I component, but I just call it 1, 0. You could then draw out the J component, but I just call it 0, 1. Now, we know that a matrix, um, when you multiply it by 1, 0, you get the first column back. So therefore, um, 1, 0 must go to, and I'll do this in a different color pen, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. So it must go somewhere like here. And that point there is 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. Okay, I won't just write that in just yet. And this point here is negative 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. It's down there like that. Okay, now what's happened here, um, how do I get the uh, 1, 0 to go there and at the same time get the 0, 1 to go there? Well, clearly it's a rotation and it's a rotation by 45 degrees. Okay, so it's a rotation 45 degrees about the center. Now, there's no need to write anti-clockwise because matrices automatically, when you do a transformations, you assume anti-clockwise. So we're just going to, for our two marks, it is a rotation, that's one mark, and you had better say uh, the center, so the center is zero, zero, and the last thing you had better say is the angle, and it's by 45 degrees. Part B, the transformation represented by M maps the point A with coordinates PQ to the point B with these coordinates. Find the values of P and Q. So you've got this matrix, and the matrix is 1 over root 2, um, negative 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. And you multiply that, you apply that to the coordinate PQ, and you're told you get the answer 3 root 2 and 4 root 2. And the question is, what are P and what are Q? Now, uh, probably the easiest way of doing it is to actually multiply these things out and solve two simultaneous equations. So let's give that a go. If I multiplied uh, this row by this column, I would get 1 over root 2P subtract 1 over root 2Q is therefore equal to 3 root 2 and I would get that 1 over root 2p add 1 over root 2q is equal to 4 root 2. Then what I can do is I could add the following so I could add equation 1 and equation 2 together and that would eliminate the q's. So you've got to think about this carefully 1 over root 2 p's plus another 1 over root 2 p's is 2 over root 2 p's. One, uh, negative 1 over root 2 q add 1 over root 2 q is just nothing. And 3 root 2 add 4 root 2 is 7 root 2. Now I want to find p, multiply both sides by root 2. I have 2 p is 7 root 2 times root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. So it would be 7 times 2 is 14. 
and then divide both sides by 2, P would therefore be equal to 7. If you want to find Q, just substitute the 7 back into one of these and, and find it. Um, it. I won't go through that, but you should be able to get yourself that um, Q is equal to 1. And we're done for four marks. Quite straightforward marks. Part C, find in its simplest form the length OA where um, O is the origin. So A is the coordinates uh, PQ and we've found that it's 7, 1 and we need to find the length between the origin and 7, 1. This is a GCSE question. It's very easy. What's the distance between 0, 0 and 7 across 1 up? I mean, it's literally Pythagoras. It's very easy. So um, what is that distance here that we're trying to find? Call it x. Well, x squared must be the width squared, which is 7 squared plus 1 squared. x is therefore the square root of this. And 7 squared is uh, 49. Add 1 is 50. So it's the square root of 50. You want to be sure to read the question carefully. It says, leave your answer in simplest third form. So you need to simplify the third. 50 can be written as, as root 25 multiplied by 2, so therefore this would be 5 root 2, and um, we're done. Next, find m squared. Well, let's just multiply m by itself, uh, and that would be fairly straightforward. So m, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, and you just want to multiply this by itself. This is really an exercise in can you multiply thirds, which should be okay for you. So um, let's work this out. 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2 is 1 over 2. Negative 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2 is negative 1 over 2, so negative a half. 1 over root 2 times uh, negative 1 over root 2 and negative 1 over root 2 times positive 1 over root 2, it's negative a half and negative a half. And I will let you work out the other ones for yourself, but you should see the other one is a half plus a half, and this one in this corner here would be negative a half plus a half. So therefore, the top entry here is 0. Then you would have negative 1, you would have 1, and you would have 0. And that then is your matrix M squared. Finally, the point B is mapped onto the point C by the transformation M squared. Find the coordinates of C. So you've got a point B and you map it onto C by M squared. Find the coordinates of C. Now, the point B, if we go back, the point B is 3 root 2, 4 root 2. So the point B is 3 root 2, 4 root 2. And this is telling us that if we apply m squared to this, which we've said is 0, negative 1, 1, 0, then it gets us the new point uh, C. So all we've got to do is multiply this out, and that will immediately tell us what C is. So 0 times 3 root 2 and negative 1 times uh, 4 root 2 would give me negative 4 root 2. And this times this and this times this would give me 3 root 2. So important we write it in coordinates. Therefore, the coordinates are negative 4 root 2 and 3 root 2 for 12 marks. Next question. Okay, um, very similar question here with root 2 is going on. So again, this is just practice with multiplying matrices. R squared, they're asking you for part A. They're asking you to multiply R by R. And it's just a, a case of can you multiply out thirds? And you should be able to do that without much difficulty at all. So this is the multiplication we're doing. Um, so, 1 over root 2, uh, so I'm just going to say, in fact, just to make it a bit easier, it's hard to say the root 2 is that times that plus that times that. And you would get, if you do that, 0. Then that times that, and uh, that times that, and that times that, you would get 1. 
that times that and that times that, you get negative 1. That times that and that times that, you get 0. And that's R squared. Part B. Describe the geometrical transformation represented by R squared. Well, R squared, we said, is 0, 1, negative 1, 0. And what does that represent? Well, if you want to, you can either learn these things, I wouldn't bother. I would always draw yourself a quick sketch. Um, that's 1, 0. That's 0, 1. And the first column of any matrix tells us where 1, 0 would go to. The second column tells us where 0, 1 goes to. So let's just um, draw that in. Um, 0, negative 1 would be um, 0 across negative 1 uh, down. It would be here. And 1, 0 would actually be um, here. Now, how do we get the red to go to the new red and the blue to go to the new blue? Well, hopefully you can see it's a rotation for one mark. The center is 0, 0. And the angle is the important thing here. The angle is... angle is 90 degrees and it's clockwise. So you could say 90 degrees clockwise. Or you could say, without mentioning clockwise, you could call it ni minus 90 degrees because conventionally positive uh, transformations are anti-clockwise. So uh, by the same token, um, clockwise rotations must be negative. Okay, part C. Describe the geometrical transformation represented by R. Now, R, let's remember, it was the, the business with 1 over root 2s. So it was 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2. And it was 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. The question is, what on earth does that represent? Now, we should spot by now that it's some sort of... Um, rotation by 45 degrees or a multiple of 45 the question is which one is it well let's just draw the thing out and see where we get to that's one zero that's zero one where does one zero go it goes to the first column here which is one over root two negative one over root two so one over root two across negative one over root two down and this one goes to one over root two one over root two which is uh, somewhere here how did we get there well, it's clear to me that that is a rotation by 45 degrees clockwise. So rotation, 45 degrees clockwise, about the origin 0, 0. And that's nice, easy five marks. Okay, next question. We have a rectangle with the following uh, vertices. Uh, find the coordinates of the vertices of the image of R under the transformation given by this. Effectively, um, we want to multiply the matrix A, which is A5, negative 1, 1, by the uh, uh, vertices of this matrix, which are 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, and 0, 2. So we just want to do a bit of matrix multiplication here. Can I do that? Is it even allowed? Well, yes, it is. A 2 by 2 multiplied by a 2 by 4. The 2s are the same. It's fine. As a result, we better make sure on this side we're going to get a 2 by 4 matrix. So let's do that multiplication. A times 0 and 5 times 0 is 0. A times 1 and 5 times 0 is A. A times 1 and 5 times 2 is 10. So that's A plus 10. And A times 0 and 5 times 2 is 10. Next, negative 1 times 0 and 1 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 times 1 and 1 times 0 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 and 1 times 2 is 1. And negative 1 times 0 and 1 times 2 is 2. And that's uh, the coordinates of the vertices or the image um, of R. Part B. Find the determinant of A. Now, A was A5, negative 1, 1. Is A5, um, negative 1, 1. So the determinant of A, well, that's just AD subtract BC. So A times 1 subtract 5 times negative 1. 
So this would simply be a plus 5. Part C, given that the area of the image of R is 18, find the value of A. Now, the image of R has a, remember with any shape, say you take a shape, this one we've got a square, you apply a matrix to it, okay, and it gets transformed. The determinant of A, that matrix you apply, tells you the scale factor of enlargement. Now we know the image of R has an area of 18. And we know the determinant of A is A plus 5. So therefore, 18 divided by A plus 5 must tell me the area of the old shape. Now the old shape, we know the area of the old shape because it's got corners 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2 and 0, 2. It's a rectangle uh, with width 1 and height 2. So it's got area 2. We know that. So 18 divided by A plus 5 must be 2. Multiply both sides by a plus 5. 18 must be 2a plus 10. Subtract 10. 8 must be 2a. Divide by 2. a must be equal to 4. And we're done. We have found a. There's our 7 marks. <clears throat> and the last question now, uh, January 2009. Um, it's a 14 mark question. So it's quite a, a large question here. Let's just go through it and make sure we can get this all right. It gives you matrices A, B, and C, and it asks you to describe the uh, transformation of each one. Wow, so it's four marks, quite a lot here. Now, the first one, you should just be able to do by inspection. That's of the form K, 0, 0, K. It's an enlargement. Right? Center, 0, 0. Scale factor, 3, root 2. Easy. Okay? B. What does that represent? Well, I just draw draw the thing out. I would draw this out and just to always make sure I don't make a mistake. There's my one zero. There's my zero one. Where does one zero go? Well, it goes to the first column here, which would be zero one. So it would go there. And where does this go? Well, it goes to the second column, which is one zero. So they swap at each other's place. That must be a reflection in the line y is equal to x and that's an easy way of demonstrating that so this is a reflection in the line y is equal to x see our last one well we've been dealing with this one over root two business for a while now um, should be quite familiar with it by now but let's draw the thing out as always just to make sure we don't make any mistakes don't want to lose marks for easy questions Right, the first column. 1, 0 goes to the first column, which is here. 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. And the 0, 1 goes to the second column, which is negative 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, which is here. Clearly a rotation, clearly by 45 degrees. So we would say rotation, 45 degrees, about the origin, 0, 0. Do we need to say anticlockwise? No, we don't, because we know that if we say positive 45, that's part and parcel of it. Okay, and that's it, that's part A. Part B, it is given that the matrix D is equal to C times A and the matrix E is equal to D times B. Find D. Okay, right. D is equal to C times A and E is equal to D times B. Um, do we know C and A? Yes, we do. We know C and A. We can multiply them together to get D. So D is C first, which is this 1 over root 2 business, so it's 1 over root 2, uh, 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, and you're multiplying it by A, which we've said is 3 root 2. Okay, this is a simple question. 0, 3 root 2. Again, this is just what they're asking you here is practice. Can you multiply out uh, matrices and can you do uh, your third work? 1 over root 2 times this would be 3. That times that would be 0, so it would be 3. That times that is 0. That times that is negative 3. That times that is 3. That times that is 0. And that times that is 0. And that times that is 3. There is our matrix D. Um, show that E is equal to this thing here. Well, E is equal to D times B. 
So E is equal to D times B. You've just found D. You said it's 3, negative 3, 3, 3. So 3, negative 3, 3, 3. And you are multiplying it by B, which is 0, 1, 1, 0. So you multiply it by 0, 1, 1, 0. With a bit of luck, we get the right answer. Let's see if we do. That times that, and that times that is negative 3. Good. Happy days. I got that one right. That times that, and that times that is 3. That times that, and that times that is 3. That times that, and that times that is 3. Yes, I got it right. And we're done. Um, it then says that the triangle ORS has vertices at the points with these coordinates. So we've got a triangle, 0, 0, um, I'm going to say minus 15, 15, and 4, 25, uh, 4, 21, something like this. Okay, We've got ourselves a triangle in space. Just always draw yourself a sketch. It makes life a whole lot easier. Um, this triangle is transformed onto the triangle by E. So you do an, a transformation E and you get yourself a new triangle. And I'm just going to, 0, 0 always stays the same. And I'm just going to put R dashed here and, uh, like you know, S dashed here. I don't know what this triangle looks like. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. So it gets transformed. Find the coordinates of the vertices of the new triangle. Uh, transformation. So we are going to apply matrix E, which we've said is negative 3, 3, 3, 3. So negative 3, 3, 3, 3. And we're going to apply it to 0, 0, uh, 4, 21, and negative 15, 15. All we've got to do is multiply uh, those out, and we will get ourselves the correct answer. And with that, we would obviously get 0, 0 here, we would get ourselves 51.75 here, and we would get ourselves 90 and 0 here. And we found ourselves the new coordinates for four marks. And lastly, it says find the area of the triangle and deduce the area of the triangle of ORS. Find the area of the new triangle and hence deduce the area of the old triangle. So going back here, that's 0, 0. Okay, um, so they were our coordinates of the new triangle. Let's just plot them more accurately now. It's going to help us in a geometry type question. 0, 0 is there. 51, 75 is, I don't know, somewhere here. And 90, 0 is somewhere here. Okay, so our triangle looks something like this. Okay, it's got base, obviously 90, and it's got height, um, 75. All right? So the area of the triangle is a half the base times the height, which would be a half 90 times 75, which is 3375. Now, the area of the uh, original triangle, well, if I divide by the determinant of the matrix, divide by the determinant of matrix um, E, that will get me the answer. So 3375 divided by the determinant of E, well, the determinant of E, we better work it out, the determinant of E... Um, is that times that, subtract that times that, it would be equal to negative 18. So when we divide these two together, I'm forgetting about it being negative because we just want to get the size, I would get 187.5 units squared and I'm done. And that's all for this session on uh, matrices. I hope you found that useful in your revision. Thanks for watching.